Viewer discretion is advised. Today is Tuesday, the 17th of December, 2013. And we're looking at the Hunted comparison on Rambo Mania, comparing it to First Blood, the novel. Now, um, shout out to my girlfriend. She's at the Grudge Match premiere with her friend Natalie. And... As we, as we speak, she's watching the film and has sworn not to spoil it for me, even if I beg her. So it looks like I'm going to be reading some spoiler-filled reviews in the next couple of days. Well, at least until I get to go see it. And even if I know the outcome, I'm probably still going to go see it. Because I'm a fan of both Sly and De Niro. Now, before we get started, I started sorry blah i am going going to inform you that it might get a little bit rantish uh tonight's episode because it's going to deal with some certain themes that uh just really get under my skin and so with that you are warned so uh let's get to it today we are gathered here in the masses to pay tribute to another great underrated movie. A movie that gets shit on by the critics like so many greats would say. You know, Zero Cool, John if you're listening, and Rambo Raph for life, Matt, and Wild Man Beyond. They would say, shit on by the critics. So, we're going to look at The Hunted from 2003. And I just want to say thank you for tuning in to my first comparison video. Because we're going to compare it to First Blood from 1972 by David Morrell. Because a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions. And they just completely shit all over this awesome fucking movie. With that, lend me your ear and we will begin. So, um, released in 2003, this movie was directed by William Friedkin and written by Dave and Pete Griffith and Art uh, Monticelli. It was uh, produced by the writers and uh, Sean Daniel, James Jacks, Ricardo uh, Mistress, and Marco Vesitti. It stars... Uh, Tommy Lee Jones in a fantastic fucking like role as Lieutenant Bonham with the nickname LT. He really makes this enjoyable. He really brings the realism. Like I, without him, I don't think this movie would be as great. He just sews this thing together wonderfully. Every minute he is on the screen, I am like totally into it. I can't turn away. He's just great in this. <clears throat> and it really busts up his, his, his action chops as well. And it brings that really awesome charismatic thing when he doesn't have... The parts where he doesn't have a lot of lines in it, he totally sells it on his body presence alone. Great acting ability. Um, Benicio Del Toro... It plays um, Aaron Hallam, Sergeant Alan ha Alan, uh, sorry, Sergeant Aaron Hallam. I'm a little bit tongue-tied today. Sorry. Um, he he he's great in this too. He comes off a little odd, but it helps to sell it. And he has some great great other funny bits in this too. But he's good. He's good in this. Such a wonderful protagonist, you know. Hero turned villain slash anti-hero. He's greatness. Um, it also has um, Mrs. Connie Nielsen as Abby Durrell. She's a FBI agent, a female agent. She's pretty good in this. I gotta say, uh, she was all right. I had a little, you know, my girlfriend had a couple of problems with her. And I could see where she was coming from. But uh, she's okay in this. Nothing to write home about, but she's alright. 
Um, the music's by Brian Tyler, who we all know did Rambo 4. Did a lot of other Jerry Goldsmith inspired kind of themes. Um, there were some moments in here where it kind of reminded me of things Rambo related. And I wonder, you know, it's ironic how that panned out because, you know, the score from Rambo 4, it was really good. I didn't find it was, it was maybe exact for the Rambo franchise, but it was still really, really good. Um, there's moments in this movie that kind of bring me kind of to Rambo 4. And it's, it's kind of, it's. I don't know. It's ironic. It's ironic because it it came out way before Rambo and it was so compared to Rambo. So, anyway. Wilderness Survival and um, expert tracker Tom Brown was brought in as a technical assistant and correspondent on this film. And I think the thing for me that really brings it away from Rambo, like... The thing that doesn't make it a Rambo ripoff is that the movie is partially based on one of his real life experiences hired to track down a special forces pupil. Well, actually his own special forces pupil. And his book, um, Case Files of the Tracker, deals with that tale. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't read the book. So I can't compare it to First Blood 72 directly, but if I ever get it, I'll read it and we can do that too as well on the show. So I guess it relates a little less to Rambo in my eyes. You know, for me now that I've looked up a bunch of history on on, on that, you know, on the shoot and everything else. Um... Because the film had some pretty bad things said about it. Like, pretty bad. And, yeah. Another great thing was... The knife used in the movie... Um, is actually a Tom Brown... Issued... He built it. It's actually an issued multi-purpose tool knife. It's um, designed to, like... Chop, split, carve, hammer, scrape... Break metal wire... Um, and glide with aerodynamic pitch. He actually invented that knife that's in the movie. And though some experts have said that the knife in question isn't all that it's said to live up to the standards it's set up to, um, Tom Brown, you know, insists it could be used for many, 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 many different things. So, um, the budget for this film was about $55 million and made back almost a total of $46 million worldwide box office. And, you know, reviewers trashed it, just calling it a, a Rambo rehash, calling it dull, calling it stupid. Um, I think it runs about two minutes shorter than First Blood is about 94 minutes I think First Blood was 96 minutes <clears throat> sorry um, I might be wrong but I, I, I think anyway um, I didn't really find it was a Rambo ripoff you know um, it was kind of different now looking back at it if I nitpick maybe I can see a couple of similarities but overall I do think it was his own thing you know, I do really believe it was its own movie. I don't think they were intentionally trying to rip anything off. But, um, you know, who could blame them? You know, like, First Blood was uh, a really big movie. You know, like, it, it, it fucking blew the roof off of everything. It pretty much created the one-man one army scenario. It fucking... It totally changed how we look at PTSD in movies and and war, like war in movies it totally changed everything on that scale it really changed how we look at war vets returning war vets you know like you know we should 
have to sympathize for these people. We shouldn't be calling them baby killers. We shouldn't be calling them, you know, maybe some of them were, but, you know, there has to be said something about someone who will give their life to protect their loved ones at home, even though they're being lied to by the government to win a war. And, you know, it's all money, right? War is big business. So, I don't know. It, it just really tugs on my heart. Like, for instance, that end, the ending scene in First Blood when Rambo breaks down. You know, I think, uh, I think the vet's got a really bad rap. But this isn't First Blood. This is the hunted comparison. So let's get back to it. <laughs> 